You have questions, he finds the answers. Edgar B. Herwick III is the guy behind GBH's Curiosity Desk. He joins me now to dig into his mailbag and tackle a few listener questions that have recently come his way. Hi. Digital mailbag, of Digital. course. Digital. Although I would absolutely love to get some snail mail. Could you imagine? One guest street, that's the address here. So send them away. Write it up. Type it up. I'll take it. Okay. So, yeah, questions, that's what we love to do at the right. Curiosity Desk. We invite all of our viewers, listeners, folks who visit us on the Internet to ask me questions. And then when I can, I try to find some answers, and we're going to do a couple of those today. Okay, love it. So, first question came our way from John in Massachusetts, who asks, If oceans are rising... Is the Earth's circumference increasing? Like, is the Earth getting fat? Basically, is the Earth getting fat is the question. So it sounds like a simple question, but apparently this is incredibly difficult to answer. To help me, I turn to a scientist, Pedro Olosegui, who's a research scientist at MIT Haystack Observatory. He was very patient with me as he tried to explain this to me in a way that I can explain it to you. So here we go. First, he said, you got to ask, when we say circumference, how are we measuring it, right? Because oh, okay. you can do it lots of different ways. You can go from pole to pole and sort of measure it this way. Yeah. You can measure it around the equator. You can do it on a diagonal, right? And actually, you know, the Earth is a little bit fatter than it is tall. So oh. the circumference at the equator is a little bit bigger than it is at the poles. So first of all, just sort of say, what are we talking about when we say circumference? Um, the other thing is the Earth is always spinning, okay. right? And the Earth is not quite as solid as we think it is. So we'll get there in a second. But let's take this question on first premises. Are the, oceans le are the ocean levels rising? So uh -huh. let's make sure we're right there. And yes, they are. At about an average, and average is the key word here, of three millimeters a year. Now, Olosky says about half of that is due to something called thermal expansion. That's where half of that three millimeters is coming from, about. And then the other half is due to the fact that we do have ice caps melting all over the place, right? Right. right. And that ice is, is turning into water, and therefore we have, you know, a rising of the oceans. But it is important to remember, according to Olosky, that this rising sea level, it's not happening evenly. Here he is explaining a little bit more about that. Now, Earth, it's a complicated thing. So around Greenland, if you lose water or ice because it melts in Greenland, instead of sea level rise, you actually see sea level drop quite significantly. So it's patchy. So this rise of sea level is an average. In some places it's dropping, in some places it's rising. Now add to this, as I was saying, the earth is spinning. And also I was saying it's not solid, right? So Olosegi, and I think this is so cool, he says, think of it like the surface of the earth is like a tennis ball. And things happen to it and it's sort of like compressing and coming back in very, sometimes hourly, daily, whatever. But lower, deeper in the earth, there's stuff that's happening. He said, think of it more like putty or honey. You can press your thumb into it and slowly, sometimes over thousands or tens of thousands of years, it's springing back, right? So this is a very complicated system. But at the end of the day, he does say that when we measure this on average with sea levels rising about three millimeters a year in distance from the core, we can say that yes, the circumference of the earth is increasing. Well, while we are planetary body positive here, <laughs> is there any implications on the Earth being wider? You could say that there are, but only because we have such incredibly sensitive material, like, like sensitive ways of measuring this. Here's Olosegi again. So one of the effects of implications of global average or mean sea level rise is that the mass that is being lost from the poles, the ice, is getting into the or closer to the equator, and therefore you would expect having a you know skater that it's spinning, it's rotating slower because the you know belly, if you will, or the arms have been brought in together and are not, you know, going up and then spinning faster. So a, a, a response, I guess, of the Earth to putting more mass and that circumference, if you were increasing it, then it's that probably Earth would be rotating a little bit slower. Pretty cool. 
Yeah, but by, by like microseconds. Oh, God. Very, 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 very little bit slower. And in fact, uh, the Earth has been slowing down for a long time, largely because of its interaction with the moon. So that probably has more impact than the actual circumference changing. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Next question comes to us from Arlington, I believe. Regine in Arlington. Uh, Regine asks... Where, when, and why did the concept of CEO start? Oh. To my knowledge, in the past, people were called boss or director. What happened? So uh, the question is basically, let's, let's trace the rise of the term CEO. And Regina is right. This is a relatively recent term, at least in popular culture. I spoke with Peter Sokolowski. He's editor-at-large at, at Merriam-Webster, which is based at, right here in Springfield in our state of Massachusetts. Uh, interestingly, this term CEO uh, is an English term, but it doesn't begin in the U.S. you have any guess in what English-speaking country we s get the term CEO to start with? Uh, Germany. Uh, English-speaking country. English, okay. Although they do speak English quite well in Germany. Yeah. Um, I don't know. United States? Let's have Sokolowski answer it. Yeah. More than 100 years ago, the Oxford English Dictionary records use, uh, interestingly, in Australia only, uh, beginning in 1914. And clearly in mid-century, uh, this was a term used in Australian business contexts, um, but did not spread to the United States until much, much later. And much, much later is about the 1970s. That's when we first start seeing the term CEO used in the U.S. And uh, there are some folks who say that this has to do with this book that came out in 1967 called The Effective Executive by a guy named Peter Drucker. And apparently this was a very influential book. And he uses the term CEO as chief executive officer in this. And that's kind of one of the things that sparks the rise of this. Now, Sokolowski says we have clues about like how quickly it becomes comes widespread. He says in the 1970s, if we look back at the New York Times, every time they use it, they actually spell out chief executive officer. And that's an indication that we don't quite all know what that term means yet if we say CEO, right? But as we get into the 80s, they start to just use CEO. So they stop saying chief executive officer and say CEO. That's a clue that by the 1980s, this term is widespread and everybody kind of knows what it means. Merriam-Webster first added it to their dictionary in 1983. And of course, it's birthed a whole sort of slew of other terms, COO, CIO, yeah. you know, the C-suite. Um, you know, one reason that Sokolowski says this became so popular so quickly, like any term, he says, it was useful to us in the time. And so, you know, the fact that um, CEO is short and it's punchy is one reason that he thinks it really rises in popularity. Yeah. Here's another reason, he says. That corresponds with a couple of different things in the culture. One, a uh, sensitivity to gender and recognizing that chairman of the board uh, wasn't always appropriate. And chairperson just doesn't kind of roll off your tongue. Um, so chief executive officer uh, sort of fills that role perfectly. Yeah. And so there we have it. It continues like all these, mm -hmm. you know, kind of word trackers that are out there. If you look at it continues to remain a very popular term. We'll see how long that continues. But for yeah. now, CEO, relatively new term. And that's kind of how it got started. Always learn something new with you. We try. Including we try. that they don't speak English in Germany. Well, they do. Yeah. They also speak German, though. Yeah. And probably a lot of other languages. I'm going to have to brush up, frankly, for next time we talk. We're ready. All right. Thank you. Thank you. To ask Edgar your questions, email curiositydesk at wgbh.org.